Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I am Liz Brown Swanson, bringing you the memorable moments here at the Green Hills Memorial Park's Memorial Day observance, which brought our community together to remember our nation's fallen and to honor the men and women who continue to serve our country today. I'm Jennifer Olvera with Green Hills Memorial Park. I have been with this event for 24 years, coordinating it officially for 22. And today what we can expect is a procession of colors, a 21 gun salute, a dove release, flyovers by the LAFD, the LASD, Tiger Squadron, and the S um, SNJ5 War Dog. We will have a wreath presentation and our keynote speaker by Sergeant First Class, Sammy L. Davis, a Silver Star recipient, a Purple Heart recipient, and a Medal of Honor recipient, and also known as the real Forrest Gump. So we are excited to be back here today since 2019, bringing this back for our community, bringing this back as a day where we can remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, fallen on our behalf, for our freedom, our country, and for our daily safety. Um, so we're all truly honored to be here and so grateful that Green Hills Memorial Park wants to continue to do such an event where we are able to give back to our community and to recognize those who deserve the recognition. Present! Huh. Welcome to brand new Palos Verdes. And if you'd repeat after me, if you place your uh, right hand over your heart, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we have at the twilight's last gleaming. My name is Dave Bradley, the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, um, here at Green Hills uh, on Memorial Day 2022. Um, phenomenal day. Um, it's special. It's incredibly special that also Fleet Week is now coinciding with Memorial Day celebration here at Green Hills. So we have many of the officers and sailors from uh, our U.S. Navy uh, here. Um, participating in Memorial Day with us. Um, it is a, an incredible day um, uh, to uh, say thanks and acknowledge the service for our service members that have paid the full price um, of our, uh, our freedom. I've worked for various branches of the, uh, of the military. I've worked for the United States Navy, the United States Air Force, and now the United States Space Force. Um, I've uh, helped uh, all of those services with their primary mission, and, and it's really an exciting um, and fulfilling um, way to help support our men and women in uniform. <laughs> who obviously bleeds red, white, and blue, enlisted in the United States Army in 1965. In March of 1967, Davis was sent to South Vietnam as a private first class and was assigned to the Battery C, 2nd Battalion, 4th Artillery Regiment, 9th Infantry Division. On November 18, 1967, his unit fell under fire and heavy mortar attack by an estimated three companies of Viet Cong. Davis manned a machine gun to give his comrades covering fire so they could fire artillery in response. Davis was wounded but ignored warnings to take cover, taking over the unit's burning howitzer and firing several shells himself. 
He also disregarded his inability to swim due to a broken back and crossed a river there on an air mattress to help rescue three wounded American soldiers. Davis continued fighting the NVA attack until they fled, a battle that lasted approximately two hours. Davis was subsequently promoted to sergeant and received the Medal of Honor the following year from President Lyndon B. Johnson, the man who was honored for his courage, his dedication, his loyalty, and his patriotism is also known for having Tom Hanks' head superimposed over that of Sammy Davis in a movie you might have heard of titled Forrest Gump. Ladies and gentlemen, I am privileged, honored, and humbled to introduce to you a true American hero, Sergeant First Class Retired, Sammy L. Davis, the real Forrest Gump. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you coming out and gathering here to pay tribute to the men and women who helped secure our future in this nation. I, I want to thank you from my heart. Today is the most expensive holiday on this calendar. Every hot dog, every burger, every spin around the lake, or every drink with friends and family is a debt purchased by others. This is not about all who served. That day comes in the fall. This one is in honor of those who paid in life and in blood, whose moms never saw them again, whose dads wept in private, whose wives raised children alone, and whose kids only remember them from the photographs that the family has of them. This isn't simply a day off. This is a day to remember that others paid for every free breath you ever get to take. Freedom is not free. God bless you all for being here today. I do want to play Shenandoah for all of you all here and for all that are resting here. I started playing the harmonica in Vietnam. My mama sent me a harmonica because she thought I was bored <laughs> because of the letters that I had been writing home. <laughs> what do you write home to mama in a combat situation? So I would, you know, gee, mom, we stepped in mud and was knee deep today. There's a letter. <laughs> I played it the whole rest of the time I was in Vietnam. My guys thought it was so peaceful and it gave their heart strength and hope. The message that I have today is about these men and women that are buried here in the cemetery. They are the reason we have our freedom today, and we're here to pay tribute to them and to memorialize them. God bless them. You've been nicknamed the real Forrest Gump. Yes, Talk about that. The real Forrest Gump has honored me. Uh, most kids have seen the movie. 
so we, we talk to schools a lot and they all every, everybody's seen the movie so they'll ask questions and I welcome that but the movie Forrest Gump motivates my heart to, to continue standing up for what I believe is right and that's what I want all of you to do is to stand up for what you believe is right what I was did in Vietnam to earn the Medal of Honor wasn't about hatred or war, it was about the love I had in my heart for my fellow man. And that's why I swim across the river and brought my brothers back, was because of love, not because of hatred or, or war. There were five of us that received our Medal of Honor that day. And we were all terrified. We'd, we'd, of all our military training, we'd never been trained on how to go to the White House and meet the president. And President Johnson took us aside and calmed our souls. I just want to start off by thanking you for your service. You are a outstanding Rancho Palos Verdes resident, and we meet here at Green Hills. This is the significance of today's observance for you personally, as someone that served in the National Guard for 36 years. For me personally, I came in at the very end of the Vietnam War was just ending, so I came in at the very end. And when I think of uh, Memorial Day, I remember those of my relatives, uncles, parents that served in the military. And especially on this particular day, I remember those who I served with when I did two tours in Iraq. In fact, uh, my last tour, when I was coming home for leave, I was at the back of a C-130 cargo plane, and there was a casket in the back, a, a young man who was 24 years old, a guy named David Finch, who was a PFC, and he had gotten killed. He belonged to a cavalry regiment and my feet were actually on his casket coming home. And as we landed the aircraft at Kuwait Airport, we all got off board, we all saluted them, and they loaded them up and took them to the States. And from that day on, you try to remember those who cannot be here any longer. We appreciate their service, and there's no words or things that could be said to say what it really means to most Americans. For this particular day. I'll talk about the quarter ton. This is the M151A1. This particular vehicle was used during the Cold War and the Vietnam War era. It's basically the same way it would come out from the factory in this direction. This is a 1966 model and I have it basically with the rugsack, radios, and all the different types of gear that an infantry or somebody on the docks or airfield might be moving around. Now these vehicles are in basically all over the world and they were used for, you know, during that air. You're looking at a Thompson machine gun, the, uh, the, the law, light tank weapons, you're looking at the radios, and you're looking at an M60 machine gun, and then the hand grenades and some of the other instruments you might have. Well, it's quite an honor to be able to do this, especially for those veterans who served previously. And uh, for us to be out here, this is um, probably well, 15th time for me. And um, it's it, an, an honor to, just to be here and, and meet everyone. Thank you for serving in the Marines. Uh, what inspired you to become a Marine? Actually, I started when I was young in this youth program called the Young Marines. I was 12 years old, and my mother uh, put my, my, myself and my brothers into this program. And starting at 12 years old is what built the foundation of my military career. And then I ended up joining the Marines later on and served for 23 years. I was the first sergeant when I got out. Um, Green Hills Memorial every year. Uh, has their Memorial Day uh, observation and um, you know behind us are several hundred chairs and it's because many people come here to not only remember their loved ones but all the people that fought for this country to make this country great so today is a day of remembrance and uh, we're very appreciative of Green Hills uh, for having this because we have an opportunity to hear from people that fought for us 
and for our, from our leaders in the military that, that have done so many amazing things and, and have sacrificed, and the ultimate sacrifice of people that are here at this uh, cemetery. My name is Karina Bañales and I'm the Deputy City Manager with the City of Rancho Palos Verdes. We are here today celebrating those men and women who served in our military and who died for our freedom here within our country. We have several members of, of the military branches here honoring those who have served. Uh, we think about what today me means to you and those that you loved and definitely recognize and honor those who have served. Will you please help me recognize and thank for her service 100-year-old Navy Wave, Regina Podolsky Tarazas. Regina, thank you so much for being here at the Green Hills Observance. You were honored for your role during World War II as a Wave. Tell us about that experience and what that was. I loved it. It was wonderful, and we were couldn't tell anybody what we did for 60, years, for 50, 50 years. Yeah. So you are. What, tell us about the Waves, the organization. You were volunteer women during World yeah. War II? I was stationed in a number of places, and I loved it. What, what inspired you to join back then? Women, you didn't see too many women I doing like that. I the Waves uniform. <laughs> so you served in the Navy as a volunteer woman, and you said you had to keep it all a secret. Oh, yeah, because I was a cryptographer. We copied Japanese code. Yeah. I'm sure you have lots of stories to share with your family. What did it mean to you to serve our country that way? I just, I just figured I had to do something, you know, like everybody else, you know. You are also celebrated for being 100 years old. You're amazing. What is your secret to having such a long life? Wine and attitude. <laughs> You're here with your mother, honored yep. for being 100, but also serving as a volunteer in the Navy. Right. Just tell us your mom's story. She's amazing. Well, she grew up on a farm in Montana. She's the eldest of nine siblings, and she always knew that she wanted to see the world. She didn't want to stay on the farm. So at 18, she wanted to join the Waves. But my, her father wouldn't sign the paperwork, so she had to wait till she was 21, because she kept telling everybody, I want to see the world, I want to see the world. So um, when she turned 21, she joined the Waves, and then she went to training or whatever, and then they gave her an aptitude test. And she only went to 10th um, grade. She didn't finish high school because she had to help earn you know, money to, for the help the family. So um, when they gave her the aptitude test, they said, wow, she's a genius. So she ended up training to be a cryptologist. So she worked the West Coast and she sat and de not decoded, but took the messages from teletype from the Japanese and then they gave it to the actual decoders. And so they told her that when she started that doing that work that you can't tell anybody what you do for 50 years or we're gonna shoot you. They told all the waves that they did that. So um, she kept the secret for over 50 years. She never told my dad, she never told anybody. Just recently she turned um, 100 in January. So what does she do? She says, Lynn, I'm gonna give, I want you to go down to the bank and get a hundred dollar, 100, hundred dollar bills. I said, what for? I want to give out these hundred dollar bills to my friends, my family, a hundred of them. That's ten thousand dollars. I said, mom, are you crazy? No, I don't want any gifts. I don't want anything, but I want them to spend the money and pay it forward. If they're going to give it to a charity, a homeless person, all I ask is that you send me a letter and tell me what you did with it. So I can get the enjoyment from that. And that's a story that blends it with what the message was today about paying it forward right. and also just having hope and pass on hope to others. Exactly, yeah. Thank you so much. What did you think of the ceremony? I loved it. I loved it. I'm coming back. It's the first time I've been here. What is the meaning behind the day for you as you serve? It has been, it's crazy. It's, you never really think about it until you're part of the service and learning all the history and coming a part of it. I'm actually from a military family, Marine and Navy as well, and Air Force. Uh, so it has a lot of meaning and it's just can't even explain it. You just met Regina, and she was a wave in the Navy. What, what, what did you ask her? I just wanted to say hello and thank her for everything, because it's really because of her that I get to be here. She is the pioneer of all of that. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we 
She changed stories. She was actually cryptographer, and I'm an electronics technician, so a lot of similarities. And uh, she told me about how she used the GI Bill and how she reused her uniform for her clothes. And uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Great to talk with her. It takes a lot of courage to serve. Um, where does that come from for you? You said you have obviously the military family that inspired you. Yes, um, actually, I actually have a family. My husband is also military, and I have a little boy, and that's kind of why I'm still here, uh, making sure that he's taken care of and has someone to look up for, up to. What about a message to inspire other youth out there that might be looking at someone like you considering joining the forces? Uh, it's a great opportunity, and it's something that I wouldn't trade for the world. It's definitely got me really farther than I ever thought I could be and given me so many opportunities. It's amazing. to be with the Gold Star family here. Tell us your stories about the people that served in your family. Well, Uncle Paul was in Korea. His name is Paul Jean Prong. And uh, he went over and he thought that he was going to be fixing trucks. But he ended up just doing, doing things like uh, raking leaves and things like that, just ordinary gardening stuff. And um, he was on one of the marches over by the Husan Reservoir and he was captured and he became a prisoner of war and so we never got to meet him and so Grandma Jean Plong became a gold star mother. I'm so sorry. And, and this is your, was this your is dad? dad? Yes, Donald Wayne Dehart was seaman first class over there in the United States Navy and he was over at Hickam Field over in Hawaii. He was Admiral's aide to Admiral Brown and Admiral Lockwood. He also saw Nimitz get his fifth star and he was also on a guard for President Roosevelt. He um, lived until until 2018. Oh no, this is, this is Dad's original dog tag from when he was in the Navy from 43 to 46. Good morning. I'm Assemblymember Al Murutsuchi, proudly representing Palos Verdes in the South Bay in the California Legislature. I'm here at the Green Hills Memorial Park to honor the men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice on this Memorial Day. Uh, we need to make sure that we continue to fight to support you know, all the men and women you know, who serve in our military, as well as the memory of those who have passed, making the ultimate sacrifice to fight and defend our country. And so that's uh, proud to join uh, the community here at Green Hills. The scouts come and put flags everywhere in this cemetery. Well, that's another thing that's changed. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, they haven't been able to participate the last few years. So Green Hills decided that we were not going to let this honor, this tradition, uh, disappear. So we persevered by receiving additional support through our family, our friends, our staff, outside organizations and this year we did have a good group of troops and packs and scouts show up to participate. I would say we had approximately 300 that showed up this year. We roamed the 120 acre cemetery and we placed flags at all the sites of the veterans that are identified. So I can tell you that we end up placing approximately over 8,000 flags at the sites that are identified as a veteran. My father served in Vietnam. He's a army veteran and he was over there in, in 68 and my family has served every branch of the military. I actually have two family members who are still serving, one in the Air Force and one in the Coast Guard. Sorry, excuse me, one in the Air Force and one in the Navy. Um, so I like to say that I, I bleed red, white, and blue. Um, this event is so near and dear to my heart. I am a true patriot. Whatever I can do to give back to our military, our veterans, I have coordinated events and job fairs and such, helping our military transitioning from back into society find job placements after they have served their years in the military. So it, it is very important to me. It's one of the most, I love all the events that we do, but this is the event that is so near and dear to my heart. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know one.
always an honor to be with former Rancho Palos Verdes Mayor Jerry Dehovic, also served in the Air Force. Thank you for your service. We, we meet here each year and we talk about the meaning behind it. Just share your, your thoughts today. You know, it, it, it really is a special day for me to sit back and reflect. I reflect often, but you know, this is a couple hours where you're, you're sitting with similarly mindful people coming out to show their appreciation for those that that served and didn't make it that's what memorial day is and they went to great lengths to define the various uh remembrances but memorial day is for those that passed in the service of this country and in you know i get the chills every time i think about it but the those people need to be honored and remembered and as i always tell you liz i have two friends of mine that died very young in the service to this country, my roommate from the Air Force Academy, Michael Norman Ayotte, 24 years old, flying an A-10 jet, uh, didn't make it to 25, and then another close friend of ours, Randy Roby, we were all very tight, he died also flying a U-2 spy aircraft before the age of 30, so I just want to say their names, uh, I think it's important, there's so many families that, that need to have their loved ones remembered, and, and uh, some of the messages today were really, really poignant. Um, you know, are, are we worthy for their sacrifice? Would they think we're worthy of their sacrifice, et cetera? So it really makes you think, and I hope people do think about that. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people don't think, and uh, we all need to start thinking and remembering. Today's ceremony at Green Hills was filled with love, patriotism, and hope, and reminds us all that we can never thank the men and women serving our country enough, and we must always remember those that have died fighting for our freedom. I'm Liz Brown Swanson for Around the Peninsula. Thanks for tuning in.